What is the difference between server, virtual machine and hypervisor? When you create an EC2 on AWS, is that a server, virtual machine or part of the hypervisor? Let's find out. So let's say Netflix wants to create a server in the cloud and that server needs one CPU. So Netflix says to AWS, hey, give me one CPU. At the infrastructure level, cloud is a collection of data center managed by the cloud provider. And data center is an array of computers which are known as servers. Now Nasdaq comes in and says, give me two CPU. And NASA comes in and says, give me four CPU. So inside the data center, you cannot go and plug in a new server every time a small request come. So if Netflix says, give me one CPU, a technician cannot just go and plug in a server with one core. Similarly, if NASDAQ says, give me two CPU, the technician cannot go real time and plug in a two CPU server. At the same time, they cannot have all these different kinds of server just laying in the data center. For example, they cannot have multiple one CPU server, multiple servers with two CPU, three CPU, and as the request comes, they will bring those servers online. It is not efficient for the space as well as power and cooling and utilization of money. Instead, what cloud providers want to do is fill the data center with maximum capacity server. So let's take a look at the inside the data center. So inside the data center, we will have a physical server and this is not EC2. So this server will have the maximum amount of CPU, memory, storage, and networking capacity available. So for example, this physical server, which is sitting in the data center has 64 cores, 256 gigabyte of memory, 30 gigabyte per second of networking capacity, and 100 terabyte of storage. So obviously in modern application, not a single application needs this kind of huge capacity. So how does the problem of just taking one CPU, two CPU, three CPU solved in an efficient manner? So a layer called hypervisor sits on top of this physical server. And when NASDAQ application requests a EC2 of kind T3 micro, and one T3 micro EC2 has two CPU, 0.5 gigabyte of memory, five GBPS of networking capacity, and 10 gigabyte of storage. So I know you folks are thinking, well, it says two vCPU, why did you say two CPU? So I'm gonna get to that, what that V stands in that vCPU. So now this hypervisor, which is sitting on top of this physical server, so you can think of this as a software running inside this physical server, can actually go and allocate part of this CPU memory network and storage to this NASDAQ application. So once this hypervisor gets this request from NASDAQ, it is going to grab from the bottom to top two cores of CPU, 0.5 gigabyte of memory, five GBPS of networking capacity and 10 gigabyte of storage and it will give it to this NASDAQ application. And that is why it is called virtual CPU. It says to vCPU as in virtual CPU. Whenever you look up a EC2, it will always say virtual CPU for the amount of CPU cores. And that's why it's called a virtual machine. And we also call it as a virtual server. So this is important distinction. So the physical server is actually the bare metal server which is sitting in the data center and the hypervisor can allocate part of the resources from that actual physical server and give you a virtual server. Similarly, when other applications running in Netflix and NASA comes in and says, hey, give me one T3 micro EC2 or give me one T3 dot extra large EC2, this hypervisor can go and grab appropriate amount of CPU, memory, network, and storage and allocate it to those applications. Now the beauty of this is each virtual machine has a guest operating system and hypervisor isolates each virtual machine. 
So Netflix EC2 has no way to interact or access the EC2 that's requested by NASDAQ. So hypervisor separates all those EC2s. And as we see it here, not all virtual machines need to be same size. So this hypervisor can allocate different chunks of CPU, memory, network, storage, and give it to different applications. And all these virtual machines can be scaled. So in this case, let's say NASA, instead of one EC2, needs two EC2, or the application traffic increases, and it requires more EC2s to serve the application traffic, not a problem. The auto scaling will work with the hypervisor and grab more resources from this physical server and create more EC2s and allocate it to the NASA application. And we're going to dive deep onto the scaling part, but this one is very important to understand that when we say server, there are two different servers. One is the physical server, which is the bare metal sitting in the data center. And then there's the virtual server or virtual machine, which is EC2 that we create from AWS console. If you are looking to learn AWS, check out my newly released course, Rocking AWS for Beginners with Hands-On Projects. This course includes cloud computing origin story. Why did cloud become so popular? Is AWS secure? Is AWS expensive? Who fixes if AWS breaks? It answers those questions in detail. And then you learn AWS services and fundamental concepts in depth. And then we do demos as well as five real world hands-on projects. You learn how you can migrate an entire organization to AWS, both strategically and technically. I also have a separate chapter on how to create your resume as a beginner and LinkedIn profile tailored for your skill sets, as well as how to create articles and blogs on popular topics to get recruiters' attention, as well as tip tricks and learning from a real world cloud architect. As you folks know, I work in the trenches. I'm not a pen and paper architect. I have given the discounted link on the description. If interested, check it out. That's it for this one. I'll see you guys and girls in the next video.